Hi, Danielle. Hi, Casey. How are you? I mean, you know, 30 days inside. It's been... This has been a tougher week. I I think just the news and I, and I, you know, I, I, you know, I wake up and I just read everything and it's so tough and it's so sad and scary. And, um, and then also, you know, mothering in this time, not not to complain, it's not, I just feel bad for my child. My only child here has just got us to contend with. And I'm just like, I don't know. It's hard. I feel I'm trying to entertain her. And she's just, it's, I think this week she hit a wall and I hit a wall. We all hit a wall this week. And. there's I think meltdown. in the beginning, it was like, this is so wild and we're quarantined and it was always terrible. It's not that, but I think I had a little more energy for it. And mm-hmm. I think the, like I have crashed this week But in terms of just the news being so devastating and what's happening is just so crazy. It's insane. And I, um, but not to get into the darkness of that, because we would like to bring lightness on this show. Um, but we hope, you know. You know, it is. So these are fucking dark, t- these are dark days. Dark days. I did we buy, cannot pretend otherwise, did you? I, I did take myself to buy a, a comfortable pant. I had been doing something so silly, which is wearing took yourself jeans. yourself where? Well, I didn't take myself. I took myself yeah. to the interweb. <laughs> yeah. And I took myself to Shop Bop. Yeah. And I have been. I, I'm a person that wears jeans a lot of the time. Like, I get up, I put on jeans. You know, it's like part of my day. And so, and I. I like to make myself and my my family like get up. Like let's get up, let's get in our clothes, let's you know, like let's have a day even if we're at home. Yeah. And I, so I've been wearing jeans like a fucking idiot I for no worn jeans one time. Casey. And I've done like interviews on national television for my <laughs> guest room. <laughs> I'm Go ahead. A jean so much. And so I just was like, what am I do? Like I just it was like I said this week yeah. I hit a wall. And I and I went and I bought myself some comfortable, like some comfy pants, because I need I'm like so a happy hug. You did. I need a hug from some clothes, because I'm not getting it from people. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting it from this world. We're not getting it from the you world. You know where I've been finding major comfort, Danielle, and I texted our little friend group this at night, and <laughs> I think people wondered if I was okay. And I was like, guys, our only solace in these times is the NASA Instagram account. You did. <laughs> There's something about looking at space that is provided comfort. It's like to just look at our planet from space feels very comforting. Not to me. I've Casey. been reading the, the readings of Carl Jung. Things are happening that are strange. Casey, when you sent that picture of space, <laughs> I didn't want to tell you this, but I find space very triggering. <laughs> very scary. <laughs> what? Very triggered by space. I just... <laughs> oh, I had no idea. <laughs> thought I was providing a comfort. No, you did service. not. I was like, I like threw the phone. I was like, ah, space! Because, like, remember that movie, was it Gravity? The one with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney? Matt was like, let's watch this. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? It's Never. My, I don't watch space. It's my it's nightmare. It's claustrophobic. It's, it's my nightmare that I'm going to get stuck in space. And he's like, you're never going you to You personally? Space. This yes, is like your I... Kate Moss delusion. <laughs> First Kate That's Moss, now you're said. an astronaut? He was like, there's so many other ways that you're going to die. <laughs> you're not going to get stuck in space. I'm like, I have a recurring nightmare that I will, not even like a daymare. Like it's just okay. something I envision. It's something you're I, living with. Where I am afraid that one day I'm going to get stuck in space. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you get there? Is this like an Elon Musk type thing where I you're... Just, that is going not, to colonize I don't Mars. Know the specifics, case. Right. But you Just get there, and then somehow I'm going to get shot into space, and and you're never coming back, and I'm never going to come back, and you just float forever, like you just float till you die. Like there's nowhere you're going to go. Like the expanse of it the, sounds to me, if I may, please. And I'm no, and you know, I'm no therapist, <laughs> and you know, I'm no therapist. Sounds to me like space is standing in for death for you. Okay. That's clear now. Okay. That's clear now. Okay. <laughs> it's clear. Okay. I, I still, it's, please don't send yeah. me any more images of space. Okay. I will <laughs> never do that again. I truly thought it was a comfort and I was no. going to send Saturn to... Okay. Please don't. <laughs> okay. Um, Danielle, before we bring out our guest, I just want to give you a big update. Please. On something that has been two years in the making and two years pending. What? I've been asked this question a million times. And I always have the same response, and that's pending. <gasps> what I'm referring to is a tweet, a DM I sent to one Catherine Dennis yes. 
ye on two years ago. You did. You did. And you know what? A lot of people are doing different things in the quarantine. You know, it's like they're taking up knitting. This one's learning a language. If you're a mom, you're fucking doing nothing but being with your kids. And I don't want to hear someone tell me to pick up a language. That's a side mm-hmm. rant. Mm-hmm. But some people are catching up on correspondence. Oh and I received word from Catherine Dennis. No. Casey? No. In the form of a video, a la Cameo. I did not pay for this. No. It came to me via Bryce Sander, oh my God. a journalist yes, who yes, uh, covers all things we love for Entertainment Tonight. And he's always tweeting funny things at us and keeping us in the loop. He's the best. And he reached out to Catherine Dennis and he told her what she had done to me, oh what she God. hadn't done. But she said in the video that she'd gone back through and she never found anything from me. <gasps> Now, I think she might have been going back through Instagram because why would I have ever sent it over Twitter, which I did. Yeah, that's strange that you sent it over Twitter. And he asked if I accepted it, and I said wholeheartedly. It's not about when you get back to someone. It's about if you do. No. Actually, you know what, Danielle? Bryce won't mind if I play this. Here it is. Take a little listen. Hi, Casey. I just want to say thank you for being such a big supporter. There's my little man. Um... Thank you for being such a big supporter. I know that you sent me a DM, but are you sure it went through? Because I can't find it. I even went and searched for it and I didn't see anything. Um, Yeah, we're just trying to make it through this whole quarantine and this weird time that, you know, everyone's in. And I just want to say thank you so much for your support. And I hope you have a lovely day and give Bryce a big hug for me. Bye. She sounded really nice, didn't she, Danielle? I love her. I know. I'm glad she's in a good place. Me too. Especially in these It was times. beautiful. She looked great. I got, a, I got a little glimpse of her son and she said she was sorry she didn't get back to me. And you know what? Everything's forgiven. Wow. Wow. In Casey, these times we have huge. to forgive, but everything is forgiven. This is huge. I'm, yeah. <sighs> Catherine. There yes. have been bright spots in yes, this dark, dark time. And that was one of them. That's a huge one. That's going to lay my head down on my pillow really sweetly tonight. Right. I hope, <laughs> I hope before the nightmare comes of before you floating. The space night. And are you floating with like a helmet on or I believe I have you. a helmet because I'm still alive, but I know that death is pending. But and are you is... hooked to anything? Like you know, No, like, I'm free oh, yeah. floating, Casey. <laughs> yeah, and I think this is coming up for you especially because this time is really we're all it's, in like a free yeah. fall. Yeah. Oh, I'm free no. floating, I'm in a spacesuit, but I am not connected to anything. Hmm. So, Mm -hmm. but I'll have sweet, sweet Catherine Dennis to get me through the night. You sure will. (laughs) Wow. Danielle, shall we bring out our guest? This guest is not only one of our closest, nearest, dearest, lovely humans, producer of, of many good things that we've both been involved in. Podcaster. How did this get made? Stars with me on Showtime's Black Monday. Sure does. And... Uh, I'm actually going to I'm gonna play a clip from the show because I love it so much and I'm on it. And I realize, you know what? I want you guys to hear a little bit of it's it. It's the funniest um, fucking show. This is a free podcast that I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> yes, you are. It's your show. Thank you, Danielle. But uh, Paul is on here to talk about something very specific. This is Paul Shear we're talking about, the, the great Paul Shear. He wanted to come on and, and really give us a pitch, kind of a plug for a show that we are slow to get on the bandwagon for. I watched two episodes today to catch myself, you know, put my head in the game, and that mm-hmm. is Summer House. Paul it, is adamant, adamant that it's the greatest show. I, he loves it more than Love is Blind. He said it's everything on Bravo, and so he's here, and he wants to... By here, I mean his home about 10 blocks from me. He <laughs> wants to get our heads and our hearts and our minds and our privates into Summer House. Can't wait to hear why. Uh, before I bring out Paul, I, I would like to play a little clip of Paul on Black Monday. Here he is. Shit, Donnie. Bienvenidos on Miami, chica. Hey. Check you out. Check you out. And check out those jean shorts. You better size up, Kiki, because I can seize up your asshole. <laughs> All right. I will have you know I am and always have been a jean short medium. Yeah, the only way you're a jean short medium is if you can communicate with dead jean shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. We're back. Guys, it's classic us, right? <laughs> so, uh, what brings you to uh, Miami? All right. I get it. 
I gotta go anyway. I gotta uh, outfit my crew. I got a crew now called the Cabana Boys. Mm. We move a lot of weight. They're all excited about the blades, you know. Except for Randy, we kind of had a thing, and now we don't. You're I'm still out. talking? Got it. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. It's a little update on K-Man. Beach day tomorrow. Nope. Adios, Keith. Okay. Dinner? Keith. Okay. Wow, I love that. I love He's that clip. Best. Welcome, Paul Shear. I am so excited to be back. Uh, that clip was insane. What you can't see there is that I am uh, fully on rollerblades, or I guess roller skates. My character makes a transition this season. It's a very big transition a lot of people make between uh, you know, skates into blades, and we really are going to cover that extensively I remember that time show. in America. That's a real yeah, time was, capsule. You know, it's uh, not a lot of people really get into that moment when people decided to make the switch. And I'm so mm. happy and proud to be on a show that embraces. Isn't it afraid? Isn't it afraid? No. Yeah, because yeah. you see shows where it's like, oh, yeah, people are on blades. Or you see shows where people are on skates. But you never see that moment when people, yeah, went to different ways. A that time when they were both overlapping and we didn't know where we were going to stand. Exactly. Like that Who time in America. Side are you on? Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a tough time. And, you know, I, I think. I believe Kim Burns did a documentary yeah. of it, but I think that's it. But that's a drier thing. I, I want to have some fun with it. Yeah, too. and and I will say it's like it's like um, yeah, we've never seen someone treat it light. Yeah, I like yes. that, and and yes. I like that it's sort of like the War of eighteen twelve. Like people don't really mm -hmm. remember it, but those no. who lived it knew that it was bloody and a time mm -hmm. and but we, we all only talk about the revolutionary war and the civil war but there right. was this other battle right. and i feel like this it, is one of those similar times it's sort of like yeah like there's some battles that are a little bit I mean, this is great because I, I you know i know that we we're all kind of like war buffs anyway and like we talk yeah. about different battles and stuff and that the 1812 battle is an important one it's just not as sexy as yeah. the revolutionary war it has a better right. name you know yeah, yeah. Like, that's it's right it's tricky it's tricky now I'm going to quickly connect rollerblades to your wife because the first time I ever met June, I was standing out in front of NYU and I saw a very tall, lanky brunette blade up to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, June I, I bladed everywhere this. in New York and then like what? took her skates off, threw them over her shoulder and we got under the elevator together and I thought, what confidence. <laughs> so yeah. much. Oh. And she would ride me so much because, you know, for this season of the show um, on Black Monday, my character now like lives in Miami. I'm like trying, I'm on the run from the law with Don Cheadle's character. And I'm like now rollerblading and I have this like whole crew of rollerbladers or roller skaters. And she made fun of me so much for my roller skating and she never, she never brought up that she did it. It's almost like she erased her <laughs> roller skating, rollerblading history. Well, you know, we hate in others what we see in ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had an extensive history. It really made me laugh on Black Monday, truly, when you brought your skates to a hotel valet and said, keep them close. Keep them close. <laughs> well, I mean, let me tell you, like this, you know, I rollerblade and skate in the show both. Uh, and and you took lessons. I took lessons. I took a lot of lessons. You had to take a class. lesson? You had to have a professional take you? Danielle, he's skating down a boardwalk in jean shorts doing like dance moves. <laughs> with no with no padding. I literally was skating two to three times a week with what? my yes, with my teacher Apple in Northridge. Of if course you know anything Apple about Apple is your teacher. Apple yes. Apple Martin? <laughs> no, not Apple Martin. Uh, Apple is, uh, she's awesome. And, uh, but a lot of the times when we decided to start doing it on the street, I said to June, I said, if you ever, if someone ever texts you that they, they think they saw me holding hands with a woman on a boardwalk, <laughs> in Burbank, it was me, but I can explain why. Because we would literally, like, there's a, there was a one point where she was like, like holding me like like almost like a dance number so i could get certain balance over certain things um it's oh. harder than it looks i'm you know oh i think it's man. just as hard as it looks it is it is crazy and uh and then you know for the show i couldn't wear a helmet or pads so you had to be really good because there was no like well, if I just fall, I'll be fine. It was like, no, no, like my head, everything is out ready. No, to we're, go. we're elder and people now. The joke is like, you are now part of like a skate crew and you're dealing cocaine and you have all these like skate boys coming up to you and you yes. had to be good and you really looked be good. good at it. Thank you. Um, well, I lost like 30 pounds. Like, this, is like, true, this is true, Danielle. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I saw the transition. <laughs> but you always look good, Paul. So that is the you're, only thing. Wow. It's like you're very you, nice. Dad. But I, I don't see pounds. that you had 30 pounds to lose. Yeah. So that's where did it come it. from? Where? Well, to, that's what I kind of felt like. I was like, if I don't, because I also feel the same way. I'm like, I don't see a, a gigantic difference, even though my pants size went down by like three sizes. Whoa. Uh, yeah. I. Um, but I was like, oh, so it was there. It just was there. So. 
if I don't notice it, I feel like it's for the better. But I mean, it was a crazy transition. I wanted to make sure that my character who was like in the closet last season on Black Monday now is out and about and living like his perfect Miami life. I couldn't just be like the same me that I was in New York. So I wanted to like, I wanted to do the Mar. I wanted to Kamal myself and do the Marvel transformation, but I just did it my own way. And, you did it with uh, Apple and not yeah. Marvel Trainer. Not, not oh, I'm, I did it with Apple. I did it with uh, and Showtime did not reimburse yoga. you. <laughs> I, it was fine. I was all in it. I was taking. I'm taking fitness classes with virtual trainers. I'm on it. I was ready for it. I wow. will say I have heard from from two friends who came out of the closet later in life that said they immediately dropped a ton of weight because that they, really? they didn't totally yes realize like the metaphorical but actual weight that they were carrying so when you did that i thought it was brilliant kind of like emotional work actually for your character well i thought like to me it was like it was the idea like now he could be the true version that he wants to be and uh and I think David and Jordan, when they saw, they created the show, obviously, uh, when they saw like what I was doing, they put me in more and more like smaller clothes. <laughs> like I thought I was just going to be able to, I didn't realize that my shirt was going to be fully off. I didn't realize I was going to be in jean Look. shorts that were barely covering my Look, ass. Look, we want to show the goods. They're like, get that body the out there. Get that Yo, body out is, there. June is always telling perfect. people to get their body to the people. So. Well, and I will say on Black Monday, they have a mandate that no, you know, women will show their bodies, but they have shown many penises. Oh, I've seen. And I'm like, I'm loving it. I'm like, yeah, it's your turn, guys. This season, I, I, I saw a full yeah. dick neck. Yep. Oh, yeah. There's more this season there. Um, you know, it was interesting because I was talking to Andrew uh, on this Instagram Rannals. live thing that I did. Randall, sorry. Andrew Randall's on this Instagram live thing that I've been doing. And uh, his sex scene that he had last week with uh, Tuck, who is his real life boyfriend, but on the show, also his like love interest was like, I was like, wow, this is like a pretty hot sex scene. Like, oh, it was, like, it's, it, yeah. And it's pretty like intense. Yeah. For, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazingly it, hot. And I love it. Uh you don't often, I feel like, sadly, I don't know, we're not treated to those types of scenes. And I, I feel those very are two very like, good-looking men that it's yes. nice to see. Two men. They're very, yeah. Together. <laughs> I think, like, what I was realizing in that, and this is, like, a weird thing, a weird tangent to go on, but I watched Cabaret for the first time last night with Liza Minnelli. And, uh, well, you don't have to tell us who's in it. Yeah, <laughs> we're but I was like, quite aware. It's interesting, <laughs> but I feel like you see a lot of sex on TV, but you don't see like sexuality. And I feel like that scene had like some sexuality, and like that's what Cabaret had too. I was like, ooh, like you're like this is yeah. a more intense thing. Like you just kind of get yeah. taken back by it. Yes, more sexuality on TV, please. Woo! I love Woo! it. I love Woo! it. You know me. I love it. Speaking uh, of sexuality, uh, Summer House. Oh, <laughs> Summer House. Yes. That's a great transition to Summer House. So uh, I it watched is, it is two episodes. The the last two, I just watched just to kind of dip my toe in the waters okay so let's get your thoughts because I, like you're coming in raw i want to see where what you're thinking before i really sell it to you because okay i'm i'm in that's the main in, thing right? however i i I'm swear to god like i was cleaning up as i'm doing every fucking second during this quarantine like kind mm -hmm. of cleaning up and watch listening i thought every single woman was sheena shea from vanderpump i was like oh sheena's <laughs> on the show and then i was like uh oh no that's not oh sheena's on this they all talk the same and the women but are by very way, kind you know, of this similar is a, this is a spin-off of vanderpump it like, is this, yes stassi like came to summer house and launched it it was like a legit like the way that like you know who's the boss spins off a show uh, my Gina's just peeked her head in and is wondering <laughs> what I'm talking about. I didn't know that yeah. who's the boss spun off anything. All uh, the family you know did. Does All June the family. Know? Oh, she can't hear this background that we're no, looking at. No, she can't at. hear it. No, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, they want to. They're appreciating your background. <laughs> Who is it? It's Casey and Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, June. Do you want to come say hi? You're not on come camera. Come say you hi. <laughs> Guys, we pause for one second because June Diane has walked into Paul's room and has told us some alarming news. I it's just a we're all talking about if we've been <laughs> able to keep up with any type of self care. If we've spoken to our therapists, and you know, June is the queen of the multitasker, and it seems she's still finding ways to multitask. You really are, June. Can you explain how your therapy appointments are, <laughs> okay. are happening at this point? A absolutely. So two things are calming me down. I have limited hours. Paul and I are really like splitting the days and trying to do this in a really like. Um, with in a really egalitarian and equitable way, right? So in terms of our work hours. Mm -hmm. So with the very few hours I have, I have to work, work out, shower, relax. Like there's a lot that I <laughs> yeah, need I to do. I appreciate that you relax. I can never get that. Well, relax. so, but that's what I've had to combine now. So I am taking baths really calm me down. 
but I also have to talk to my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have taken the last couple therapy calls in the tub. <laughs> And I've been splish really, splash like, of the water. <laughs> splish well, splash. I'm really, listen, there have been an, a couple unfortunate splashes <laughs> <laughs> that I've definitely oh. to cover. We, is- uh, we interviewed somebody on Unspooled one time who was taking the interview in the bath. The splish- and and it was just hearing like the trickling of water and the splash. And I was like, what, what, why are we doing Look, this? Like, I've typed on so a computer. I've typed on a computer in a bath once. You know, I'll do a lot from there too, but I've never done a therapy session. I, when I'm in a bath, I'm in a bath. And that is all I'm doing. Do you ever tell yeah, her, June? You, yeah. you don't want to tell her what you're up to. I don't want to tell her. Isn't that your I'm job? Just right. tell her that exact everything? It is, but I feel like it's a lot to be like, I'm completely naked in a body of water. <laughs> like, June, I got water. news for you. She knows. <laughs> I think she knows. Right but, by the Again, way, there's been a couple of like, whoopsie. <laughs> like, <laughs> woo, the soap. But I don't, I, I, I don't think a bath is a bad place to be for a therapy session it's like you are in one spot like very relaxed like to me i Ah. was cleaning up my kid's bedroom uh one time when i was on the phone with my therapist and i felt like that was kind of cheating and then i like i got self-conscious and i had to sit down in another room i feel like also a little bit new to it like i've been you know when you've been around the block (laughs) well in june of course you've shown up to many sessions and slept through through them so yes, you've and then reported on my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've gone to therapy with June, and the first thing that she says when we get to therapy oh. together is, "I'm tired." <laughs> just me, I'm just I'm going to go to sleep. I'm like, okay. But I, yes, when he asks, some a wave of exhaustion hits me as soon as we walk into that room. June, have you ever slept during your couples therapy session? No, but I've literally said, like, my eyes are closing. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> better say something to perk me say, up. That's say on you. Say something interesting, or this, or I'm taking I'm a out. snooze. I will wow. say, I don't think I could talk to my therapist if I did not have underwear on. Mm. <laughs> I need mm. to have. A chance. Now listen, I also like the other problem I have, Danielle, is like I like a scalding hot bath. So like must- super, super hot. And so I have to get in it, get it to a temperature that literally turns my skin red. And then I have to warm it up. <laughs> so <laughs> there have been a couple of times where I've No, been, June, you have I've not put her on mute. Her. I've no. her. Uh, to the point where, but again, I fall asleep so much that it, it's not uncommon to just like this go silent for me to just go away for a bit. <laughs> now, is this the same therapist you've had for years? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been with her for over a decade. I was going to say, so she, yeah. she knows your, your, your I feel like you've said so many things to her. I, I'm surprised, actually, that you wouldn't tell her, like, I'm straight up in the bath. Yeah, I know. I mean, I could, but yeah. I could, yeah. I could. Well, but, thank you, June, um, for this, and you've con- thank you you've continued me. to pave the way in terms of multitasking. Yes, you really. But have. I, I, I like I like a bath therapy. Like I, I do feel like that could be something that that could be sold out here by uh, like by LA therapists. Like get in the bath and we'll just talk. <laughs> yeah. You think that hasn't been? You think that that's not going on already? I'm sure, it's yeah. I mean, it's... the other problem. This is the last thing I'll say is like I've had to put her on speaker a lot because I I lose my little earbuds all the time. So I've had to put her on speaker, and then it's like quite a strange echoey experience. Also <laughs> in there, <laughs> Dude, yeah. This so is... it's, there are things you do have to. Work are you on. just holding the phone with a wet hand, or is she no, off on like I the soap the dish? <laughs> sitting quite nicely on like a little bed of like ham towel well that's <laughs> she's nice, quite nice real, that you've real made her nice. that's real nice, nice and cozy yeah no, she's got that's a nice, nice little throne there <laughs> okay June, June. reporting so, from the quarantine you. thank yes, you always you. multitasking thank even you. during oh. the quarantine so love yes you. Bye, June. so that was June can I have my your beast back there <laughs> oh, <perfect>. she's um <laughs> June was also in the bath while she was talking with us. Yes. She, yeah, she brings that bath around. It's a portable bath. Oh, I'm, I didn't mean to say who's the boss spinoff. Um, Growing Pains had a spinoff called Just the Ten of Us. It was oh, about the gym don't, teacher. You don't have to explain. Uh, Patrick Duffy, of course. No, that's a different no, show. No, different show. What? Just the Ten of Us is the coach from Growing the, Pains. Yeah, he moves. Yes. Coach. Yeah. I have seen the oldest, sexiest daughter, the redheaded Ooh. one, yeah. in my yoga class. Okay, oh, I know wow. just the ten of us. Sorry. Okay, yeah. So it was I, about I a family with ten kids. Um, so it was like so basically Vanderpump rules bred summer house. So that's why I think you have that 
connection to those voices. I'll tell you that, you know, I dip my toe in and out of Bravo. Whatever I see, I really enjoy. Then I go full on in. Um, and this show scratched an itch that I really needed to be scratched, which is it reminded <laughs> me of old school real world. It's like mm. they're not young, they're not young. Like one is celebrating his like 37th birthday. Um, <laughs> but but they are like but they are like just having fun. It's there's no stakes to it. There's no the drama is a little lighter, like literally. Then the what, first, Vanderpump? Then anything that I've seen on reality shows. Like it wow. really is like it's like the opening episode of this season revolved around someone getting finger banged. And that's not me saying it. It's them saying it. Like, that's a know quote. That, uh, they're like, yeah, Kyle finger banged uh, Lindsay. Oh, and like, they're 37 they all... and they're saying finger banged. Yeah. They're talking about getting finger banged and no one in this house fucks. All they do is dry hump and finger bang. And it's like, <laughs> it's crazy. Except for this one guy in episode two, who is not a main member of the cast, who is going down on his girlfriend on one of the other girl's beds. Like they're having a party and they like shot it in a weird way where you saw just enough to make you be disgusted by I what was going like, on. I feel like a prude, but I'm truly nauseous. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That, so that like, that's the level of like shenanigans happening on this show. Like, but it's like, Two guys or three people like run a canned wine company. Uh, you Ooh. know, it's Kyle Carl and Amanda. His name and, is Kyle uh, Carl. Oh no, there's that's the three oh, okay. of them, Kyle Carl. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, it's called Lover Boy uh, Mixed Spirits in a Can. Uh, and uh, but you know, it's like it's so loosey goosey, and they actually go back to New York. It's summer house, so they only they only shoot on the weekends, so they live their lives during the week. And then do they we come see back. them living their lives or only Not summer really. house? You see like one scene of one of them when they're away. So it's like they're basically just there for the weekend. So, so does that change the caliber of cast member in the sense of like these people actually have other jobs or no, it's all the same? Well, again, like I think I'm used to the importance of uh, of the way people carry themselves on Bravo shows. Like even if it's Vanderpump, there's an, there's an, there's an aura around them as if they are more important here. It's kind of like... <laughs> We just like the fuck off around in the summer in Montauk. Like, there's just like a lightness to it that I. Oh, really... they're in Montauk, so they're not even. I mean, I've spent uh, Montauk is beautiful, but it's not like a main yeah. Hampton, so they're not yeah. even in like. It's it's a TV. It's it, it's like it's um not really named Hamptons because I guess they were in East Hampton in the first season and they were kicked out of East Hampton. Mm -hmm. So now there's some there's some Montauk Ham like they don't say it ever, but they go out to restaurants all the time. It is and, interesting yeah. because Real Housewives of Beverly Hills begat. Vanderpump mm -hmm. and Vanderpump begat. It sounds this like this is like house. the grandchild of yes. the housewives. So it is sort of yes. like the least like the lineage. Yeah, like so it is the most diluted if you think of it that way. Yeah, it's definitely light. I mean, like, Casey, because like, you've watched two. I mean, where do, where do you fall on this? Because I like it, I just got suckered into it. Like it just is like it's. I mean, do you find these things appealing? Do you find of these course. things? Of uh, course. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm going to be watching, and I like what you're the way you're selling it because, at least right now in this current moment in time, lighter is better. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like that show makes me want to drink like wine because they're they're always because again the the three people who are on there have like the eight work at a wine company. Yeah, they went to like drink... seven vineyards in the two episodes yes. I watched. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they're like they're just drinking and eating and there's such a lightness to it. Like there's like the drama the drama and this is what I love about it comes out when they're super, super drunk. Like they have like well, that's a, a Bravo staple. Party. Yes. And it's and and but it's like and it's like um but it's like low key drama. Like there's no like I'm trying to think of when they were at the toga party um, you know, they're getting upset because, you know, uh, one guy's kind of flirting with another girl. Like that's the level of, it's very, very And basic. is there like a, the one thing I couldn't understand, is there like a premise up top of like, okay, these people yep. have to live here? Cause I heard that someone's like bringing in people from that aren't even on the show. Well, this is the tricky thing. They've kicked people off the show. Bravo. Proper. Bravo has. You or, can't, yeah. it's not like real world where they go to the producer and say this person has to get out of the house. Or whatever. Yeah. So I think like, and this is where I'm unclear about it. No one really speaks to it that much, but like there's a guy, Jordan, who is insane. Um, like he was trying to get back in the house. So this season he came back to the house, even though he's not on the show anymore and started having sex with uh, off camera 
uh, sex with one of the girls on the show. But actually, he wasn't having sex because he has this whole problem about never being able to have sex, although he talks about sex all the time, which is another thing. Is but- he the one that the girl try- wanted to choke him, choke him out yes. while they were having sex? Yes. And then he yes. was like, no, thank you. <laughs> <What? Yes. laughs> so this girl was like, it's clear he doesn't like me. She's like, but I do want to spice things up because he really wants spicy, you know, and like our sex life isn't that great right now. So she's like, I'm going to get some handcuffs and I'm going to really pretend like I'm going to really give it to him. But I'm just going to tie, you know, handcuff him to the door and then leave. Yeah. Get him naked and then leave. And I was like, ooh, that does not sound like a recipe for romance. Like, what, what do you what do you want from this? And but- it was really sad when she had her props like to present props and then be turned down sexually mm-hmm. is so devastating. Oh, I've- and that's the thing that I, I watch an episode with June because I'm so on it. Uh, like I'm so in it. Uh, and June is very disturbed because the show is a lot from mounted camera. So it's not like there's a crew running around. Like there's just a camera in the corner, like the top <laughs> corner of the kitchen, just shooting in the kitchen. Like, oh. so it's a lot of. This is very a, every, low, low. Yeah, they're five. just like, fuck it. Yeah, there's a lot of cameras in the corner of rooms. So you're just watching and sometimes they'll split the screen four ways. So you'll just see like four people getting ready for the night. And the house is disgusting. Ew. It's like just it's just constantly. I don't just know gross. that I could, could I do I, I like the sort of Yeah, I like you can, nice Danielle. Houses. Danielle, no, you'll, you'll, you'll like it. You will quick. you will like it because it's like it just is it's it's um it's like what do you call it like when you have a sorbet in between courses at a oh, fancy and, um, restaurant? It's a like palate cleanser. a palate cleanser. Yes, yeah. and a mousse bouche. It, it just kind of like lets you just it. You're, it's light, light. It goes light. down real nice and easy. All right. Yeah, I'll give it a uh, try. And, yeah, and there's um, <laughs> yeah, that guy like there was one moment in last week's episode, and this is like like I was on Watch What Happens Live this week talking to the uh, two of the people from the show, oh, and okay. like, the big the big drama was. That this one girl wouldn't sit on this guy's face while they were making out. What's happening? This show is <laughs> disgusting. This show is- Danielle, I feel like this show's hitting you wrong in these times, and it's hitting Paul and I right. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, I have what- this. We we don't know what we're up for in these moments right when now. When I yeah. asked her about that, I'll watch what happens live. You said, well, asked her I'm- about yeah. it. Yeah. I said, why wouldn't you sit on his face? Oh my she's like, god, well, I'm a- Paul. She's like, I'm a bigger girl. She's like, I can't. I'm afraid that my heft would have hurt his pretty face and the only reason that i want to like make out with him is because of that pretty face so i don't want to mess that up by sitting she doesn't want to mess the goods guys my this head is, is so... in my hands that is the most <laughs> devastating response i can't this is... wow this paul is... and you had to sit there paul and make con- continued eye contact during that question and oh, response absolutely and i was can in I it say... to win it that you guys keep telling me how light this is and how like it's like a sorbet but this is heavier and darker than anything i've heard on any of these breasts. i'm and now, sorry what? But the people don't seem and i mean this in like a compliment they definitely all seem like unhinged but not as crazy as maybe some other shows or am i yes. wrong it's a lot of guys that are just like i don't want a girlfriend and we're fighting that age-old battle women yes, want to be it, with it, them no, yeah no one wants to be in a relationship and like like it's almost to a point like it's it's so comical like this this guy who had the finger banging incident they're like you know maybe we should try it like we're best friends maybe we should try to like do this and do what finger ha- banging <laughs> <laughs> like to have like a real relationship now because they're like best friends and they went on one date one date and into the first 5 minutes they're like let's get to know each other like let's just like ask questions about like what we want and like the second question was do you want kids and this guy freaked out so hard like it was <laughs> it was the most casual like dumb like like they're just sussing each other out yeah and he was like and, and and the whole relationship ended there and then what he did was the next day they went to a crossfit class together and he asked out the instructor and started dating the instructor <sighs> <laughs> so I love it. I'm in. Uh, I don't it's know. Is it the it's... kind of thing you can kind of put on in the background, or is it really? Should I just oh, yes. really go fully in? No. If I was to describe to you what happened this season, I could probably do it in f- four sentences. Like okay. you know, like it's yeah. like there's not much plot going. I on. felt pretty caught up when I got <laughs> yeah. to the last two. I was like, oh, I'm in step with these people. Yeah. There's like there's there's like some running drama, but the running drama kind of is the same. It's like. Yeah, it's it, it's not like I feel like when I get into Beverly Hills, I'm like, okay, I'm so excited for the new season of Beverly Hills. I'm like, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving that Denise Richards may be the bad person now. I, I'm loving this new character that they brought in. 
uh, Leah, or is that no? She's from Roni. Uh, the, yeah, uh, but Garcelle, but, Garcelle is oh, coming to Beverly Hills. Yes, I'm you're very excited. excited about her. Um, but I'm like that show. You have to kind of understand everyone's alliances and how yeah. they all fit with each other. Mm-hmm. Here on this show, it doesn't seem like there are any real alliances. It's just sort of like. Because you'll just hear in a, a, normal, a normal episode, like, well, we're best friends. And then they'll go to the other room, like, well, we're best friends. I'm like, well, I guess they're all best friends. Like, there's no, there, there's no, <laughs> there's no real backstabbing or backbiting in this show. I <laughs> like it. It's, it is a lighter touch than Vanderpump feels very dark. And I had to, like, yeah. kind of get past that to, to like Vanderpump. Vanderpump is a Summer t- House like, a is a watch, fun. But, but yeah. as Vanderpump, as they get more successful, Vanderpump carries a weight to it that's a little bit too much for me. Like, I mean, I, yeah. I like it. But no, there's, we were there's, just yeah. talking about that. Yes, yes, yeah. agreed. So this is like this is my this is my quarantine recommend. I dipped my toe into this a little while ago. I got obsessed about it. And when they asked me like to come on the show again, they're like, "What do you want to talk about?" I was like, "Summer House." And I think <laughs> yeah. everyone was kind of surprised by it because it's one sure. of the Bravo shows that no one. It's I, under I the radar. Like, yeah, for sure. It, yeah, it's but I will say, deck. Paul, it's when we did yeah. when we did a live show, we were asking like, "What is everyone into?" And I mean, we were shocked. The applause was literally thunderous for Summer House. So I don't think you're yeah. alone. Brian right. Moylan yeah, building steam. Brian Moylan uh, also talks Summer House. He loves it. Yeah, because so. I think it's like I just think it what it does for me, and again, it just brings me back to my original days of watching like Ruthie. On the real world, that girl with Lyme disease, Steven slapping her in the face. Like those Irene. kind yes, Irene. Like those kind of drama. <laughs> those like, beautiful moments. Those beautiful yes, like classic lot, TV moments. To me, real world Las Vegas, it doesn't get better than that. Trishel. Uh, oh, Trishel. So good. I mean, so much good stuff there. They literally lived over a bar. Uh like, I mean, you couldn't get better, you know. So like that's the kind of drama that like that I like. I can just like binge them out so easy. Mm-hmm. And you're right. It's like it's like cleaning up the house and listening to it kind of work. You I know, like it's, that. It's, that kind it's of show. perfect for I'm these give times. It a, you know, it sounds dark, but I'm going to give it a whirl because I'm I'm only painting times. some of the crazier moments. I think you'll like it, Danielle. I would love to come back and 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 find out what All you right. what you think about it. All right, I'll try and dig in this week. Let's see what I can do. How's your appearance on Watch What Happens Live? Do you guys feel good about it? Yeah, it's it's it airing. Really fun. It, as we it, speak, today. just yeah, airing as we speak, and this will drop tomorrow. I'm sorry to say, drop. It sounds so stupid. <laughs> to say that. Our album, but it was really fun. We were on with the housewife uh, and Sonia Morgan, and we're gonna Ooh, get into it more. So but good, it was good. It was really fun. To be it, honest, it was. Um, it was that really show nice. works very well in that format. It's mm-hmm. already so kind of low stakes in a good way and very simplified. I felt very and casual. Kind of just, yeah, he rapid fires questions at you. So you just like, it's almost like now we're talking to you. Now you're talking like there's no, the cross talk is at a minimum. So it's very easy to kind of make it look good on TV. Yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah, well, I loved it. Paul, love is there it. anything else you want to just tell us about your quarantine before you go? How are you feeling? Where are your spirits? You know, I, I am, I'm, I'm very lucky because I love my wife and I love my kids. And we often talk about this idea like, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be amazing to freeze this moment? Like we're, our kids are growing up so quick, wouldn't it be great. And I feel like we've gotten that wish. We've gotten a chance to be around our children nonstop. And that's awesome. Um, but on the other side of it, it is like being in prison and not knowing how long the sentence is for. So there are ups and downs in that. It's like, mm-hmm. uh, are we here forever? Like, you know, because you hear certain things one day and the next day. So yeah, highs and lows, highs and lows, but getting through it. I bought myself a Tiger uh, a Tiger King COVID mask so I could wear that out. It says, Carol did it. Uh, on the front of it. <laughs> I, uh, I've been building Legos. Legos really helped me because there's so few things in life that you can have like a completion to. And there's something very Zen about like, I did it and mm-hmm. now it's over. And I feel like I've completed a task. It feels really good. Oh, and, that's uh, nice. And as of tomorrow, I start shooting a TV show from my office for uh, Marvel. All the camera equipment is here. I'm looking at it right now. What? And I'm what? Up, uh, yes. So uh, I don't. You're know a character can... in it. There's something going on. I can't really talk about it more than that. Probably <laughs> I've, heard, I've already said too much about it. <laughs> but yes. Uh, so <laughs> well, yeah, there's something going on. The wow. minute that it became clear, like within this crazy time, like there will be content. Like mm-hmm. there will be blood. I was like. 
I bet Paul has 20 ideas. You're always so like forward <laughs> really thinking are. about this. Well, you're, I mean, you're, you... you're very so adaptable and you have such forward thinking in terms of like work. And I'm very impressed by the content. Like you've been hosting these great Instagram lives for Black Monday on Sunday nights, which inspired Danielle and I to do it. Like mm-hmm. you're very, you're just, it was, you're it's a been visionary. So fun. Well, you're so lovely to say it. Um, it's been so fun and like, uh, yeah, I think that, by the way, I think people should tune in to this Sunday of this Instagram Live. It'll be our mid-season finale, and we'll have everybody from the show this Sunday. It'll be really, really fun. And we've had great people on the show. My big my big dream guest was to get Claire Danes to come on to think it was a, a Homeland after show. Uh, but I was it was working down a path for a while, and I think that's fizzled out now. Aww. Fizzled out. Get Claire, but you know, get Claire Danes to jump on Instagram Live to do a bit. That Maybe would be a tough, a tough Maybe. ask. You know Look, what? in hey. these times, we don't know. People I mean, have it. a veil. People are tech avail during these but times. Regina Hall is going to be on. Regina Hall will be on I this love Sunday. Her so much. With you. That's so fun. Yes. Is, Regina's the best. And can I ask you guys this question? This is a question I'll ask to you. Where do you, What do you feel about? Because I feel like the people who are allowing themselves to go on camera, it's you're kind of seeing like these people are the real deal. There's some people that are not allowing themselves to go on camera. I think there's some people that are like holding up and waiting it, waiting it out. Why? Because they what just don't feel like they're it? presentable. Oh, I mean, I did a two hour Zoom makeup session, you know, with my makeup artist and she dropped off lashes and stuff. And I said, I got a diva ring light and I said, I'm ready to go. And I, I literally it. put on some a bold lip and said, "Where I'm ready for my close up, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> I love it. And uh, you know what? And by the way, you both look great on it. And I'm just going to give you one thing before I leave. Definitely watch Matthew McConaughey's Instagram TVs and whatever. He's up to some crazy shit. He's calling bingo. He's just sitting on a couch talking about how to lose a guy in 10 days. He's like, no. oh, I love this script. Great script. And you know what the best thing about a romantic comedy is? It's just like the connection that you have, the male-female connection. And I had that with Kate. <laughs> and it's like, oh. who's asking these questions? He's just like, he's out there just kind of rapping. It's like those big, uh, those commercials, those car commercials. But it's just small McConaughey. Wow. I I didn't I didn't think there was any like thinner membrane that could could be between like celebrities and the public and yet it's even thinner now it's mm-hmm. just like people are just like fuck it here's my bedroom like it's yep. just gotten nuts and I love we're it we're seeing so many celebrities houses I mean people are just ripping on Drake nonstop yeah. like, like well that was like people <laughs> that was a wild that's a wild lobby I mean like looking <laughs> like that's a it's it you walk into his. I just saw the Architectural Digest thing, and I was yeah. like, this is insane looking. I've never seen anything <laughs> like this. <laughs> These are very, uh, very strange times. But very I strange think indeed. Important to try to make people laugh if we can, and it feels fun and like a nice release to do fun, creative things. Yeah. I mean, more than ever, we are a home with nothing to do, so give us stuff to do. And if we're lucky, every te- every television show will make a comeback at some point during this this quarantine. In, the, in a living room. Or yeah. <laughs> a bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Thank Paul, Paul Shear. So um, this is so, uh, so great. I hope you all try out some more Summer House. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it all ends this season. And Paul, I'm actually going to like, I don't know if you would say play you off for a podcast, but with a clip yeah. of mine from Black Monday. I mean, I, but I'm glad you came on and I hope everyone watches Black Monday. You're so fantastic. The mid season finale. This is it. We'll come back later and finish on it up. Sunday. Bye, right. Paul. Bye, Paul. Bye, everybody. Bye. Um, so I am going to leave us with a clip, frankly, of myself and Andrew Rannells. Um, I play Tiff Georgina. This is in the 80s, and I am a denim heiress, and I'm in an arranged marriage with a gay man played by Andrew Rannells, and I have now demanded a baby from him, and this is a scene from that, and uh, thanks for indulging me. Enjoy. Blair, I want a baby. The next words out of your mouth better be grand piano, bird, or or I love your way, cause single. I'll do all the work of hiring all the people to do all the work. You will not need to do a thing except, and I've even taken the liberty of setting up bathroom four with some lotion and the new Richard Gear GQ. Mm. Hmm. Now, Tiff, we're not raising a baby together. I-, I know firsthand how a bad parent can fuck up a good kid. No, 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 no. The answer- ah! Ah! You don't get to say no to me. Okay, you have hijacked my name and my life and my identity. I was Tiff Georgina, and now I'm just some mama bee hawking scants to a bunch of Bible-breeding bitches on a channel in the teens. It's not great, Blair, but I'll take it, and you don't get to take it from me. And unlike you, I don't get to have a beard unless I go off my scrotolactane.
Is this really what you want? Yes, yes, yes. But my clock's a ticking, so you've got to get your Richard in gear, so to speak. Little dollop will do you. Little squirtages. Okay, okay. What if we do a test run first? Yes. I know this hotshot who's coming to the election party tonight, and he's got three kids. So why don't you stay home and offer to babysit and see how it goes? Afterwards, if this is still what you want, I'm on board. Yes! Oh, it's a deal! It's a deal! It's a deal, Daddy. And here's our little baby boo-boo. Okay, well, don't infantilize the cup, because I have to... Uh-oh, baby. Use hungry. it. We're back. We're back. Um, Before we get into the cities, Casey, I would just like to shout out a really good friend of mine who's doing amazing charity work right now with everything going on in the world. Her name is Brooke, and she's a superhero, and she co-founded this um, organization called Dine One One. And what they're doing is they're collecting money. They started a nonprofit, and they take all the money that they collect, and they buy food from restaurants and bring it to hospitals for all the people on the front line doing the amazing work right now. So Wonderful. not only are they feeding those people that are <sighs> heroes every single day, yep. but they're also keeping local restaurants in business. So it's I love that. Amazing organizations are doing such great work. So if every if you know, I know we're all right now looking to help and nobody's got a lot of money because nobody's working. But um if you do have some money and you are looking for even twenty dollars to feed a nurse or a doctor or a, the janitorial yep. staff of these hospitals that are all And also I just want to quickly point out my friend was saying like a lot of these nurses, they're they're it's so crazy. They're eating, you know, bad food from a vending machine. So yes. imagine going into work, morale being what it is, to be able to get a nice meal, nutritious, mm -hmm. good meal when you're doing the heroic work you're doing is incredible. And so called, I will be donating. Yes, it's called Dine One One, D I N E One One. Um, right. And they are on Instagram. They have a website, everything. You can write it off. They're legit. We don't even have a website. I know. Remember <laughs> when we were going to make a website and then someone was like, I don't know if people are doing people websites do anymore. Websites. They're definitely doing them for charity. This yes. is not. <laughs> I mean, I guess we are charity. <laughs> we're becoming it. <laughs> I love that. Dine One One. Dine Thanks, One One. It's an amazing organization supporting our frontline workers and supporting local restaurants, um, keeping keeping businesses going. And it's so great. And they're doing such great work. So I just wanted to shout them out tonight. Because even if you give $20, it's amazing. Even if you give five, let's be honest. Yes. That's wonderful. If you give a dollar. A dollar. And you write it off on your taxes, guys. Oh, Danielle. Casey. You know, when you're listening to this, just know that you will have either seen or missed our performance on Watch What Happens Live. <laughs> guys, can I tell you, to be in the presence of Miss... Sonia Morgan was Miss Sonia Morgan on a Zoom platform. So we're seeing Andy, Sonia, you, me. To see yeah. us, our Brady Bunch like faces on the screen it was so surreal. And even before we started taping, you get like Sonia is, it's not a performance, guys. No, it, no, no. She is who she is is in every s so she just comes on she's like in reading glasses <laughs> she's like in her own her, she's in silk pajamas she's like this is from my line mm -hmm. then she's juicing like her brains out and mm -hmm. then we find out that it is true she has been quarantined in a spa but it, it seems that a she detox had, spa yeah, a she detox had, <laughs> she had gone to i think palm springs palm desert area to detox <laughs> you know you know juice and you know, new, we all know she loves the juice. Yes. And so and it explains the gassiness. I will say it's all coming together now. Yep. But um, she but then when everything when the shit hit the fan and everyone went into quarantine, she was kicked out of that spa as you know, because they said we're no longer you know, this is no longer a, a place where people can be. It's and, no longer an essential business. Yes. It's not essential to some. And so she Walk down the road, I believe. Kicked down the road. <laughs> like a, a can. Like a can. Like, like a can. I'm sure just dragging her silk pajamas. And she said, you know what? There was another spa down the way a little bit. And guess what? They got my juices here. Yeah, they do. 
And I was like, so she's alone at the spa. She looked gorgeous, guys, as you'll see. She, not a stitch of makeup. I said, did yeah. you? I said to her, Sonia, did you bring? She's like, I don't have any makeup on. I was like, I said, did you bring it with you? She's looking no. better than both of oh, us did. I had on a full face, like a pancake makeup. Danielle, I did a two hour, two hour. I don't have this kind of fucking time right now. Zoom tutorial, makeup tutorial with my longtime makeup artist. And I got to tell you. I looked great. You looked fantastic. No, and- I'm kidding. You you looked amazing too, but I also, I- <laughs> like when the shit was really hitting the fan in the beginning of all this, I want you to know I made two purchases frantically. Toilet paper and a diva ring light. <laughs> I was like, you know what? There's going to be press and it's going to be in my house. I didn't think of any of those things. I didn't have lashes. I didn't have a deep light. In fact, at one point, Miss Sonia Morgan said to me. Oh God, I can't. <laughs> What did she call me again? Deirdre. <laughs> Deirdre. She was like, Deirdre. <laughs> I was like, that's not my name. She was like, Deirdre, it's very dark where you are. Do you have a light? Do you need a better light? <laughs> She's like, like, Deirdre, you need better light. And but I was she was like, looking out for you. She was, and I appreciated it. I was like, I, A, I'm not Deirdre. B, I do not have more light. <laughs> but C, she, she loved you. She it was loved very you. cute. Danielle was dressed as Sonia in her classic look with, go ahead. With Danielle, what a tiara. Mm-hmm. Um... A reading glasses, <laughs> mm-hmm. a white button down like man's tailored shirt and my uh, but buttoned hardly at all with a black bra sticking out. And I called it from the Sonia Morgan quarantine collection. Yep. And you said you had your boobs, boobs I, up and and, said, and I said gas in my butt. <laughs> or something. No, you said boobs up gas in my bottom. <laughs> she the look on her face. It was so funny. It was a last minute improv. I wasn't sure how it took, but it uh took. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe what well, I'll say what I was wearing just because it's a seg it's a segue yes. into tonight. Yes, 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 yes. I yes. you know, I'm sure now by now you've seen New York breathlessly where I'm watching it like the second Ugh, they come out. Me too. And I was wearing another Sonia look that I think will hopefully become an instant classic, which we just <laughs> saw, which is just Simply a nice outfit on top and a one-piece bathing suit underneath. She just when like, Sonia she was wearing her bathing bra? suit to dinner, <laughs> did she? She's like, it's a bra? better fitting bra. My bra doesn't fit. It, she's a hero. She is. She just doesn't give a fuck, and I appreciate that. I appreciate she doesn't she... give a fuck, and yet looks so beautiful, <gasps> so effortless. She was genuinely such a nice person too. So nice. She was talking about her daughter being in quarantine. Uh, she, I, I just love that she is alone, juicing basically with strangers. I think we asked if she had had sex during the quarantine and she said, it's not over yet. <laughs> she said she's looking to quote, catch a D. <laughs> so, you know what? We've had that. That was truly the greatest true, hour of my quarantine. Us, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> she just kept saying you're welcome. And we were so grateful. I just, be. everything that she said was so wild. Like she said about Leah, she's like a rash. She's like a bad rash. And then she goes, but I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> and she do- And the truth is, yeah. she does. It's not like when Ramona's like, I thought it was a compliment. Like, you know, Ramona is doesn't give anybody a compliment. She's just yeah. a, a, a cunt. You know, I love Ramona, but she is. And I say that with, with love. No love. <laughs> <laughs> but... Sonia Morgan, when she says, I mean it as a compliment, she does. She Yeah, and it was hard does. to drill down with her on how did she mean that as a compliment. It kind of fell, and fell away. And almost doesn't matter. It does not matter. She was like, you know, kind of it sticks with you. A rash. That's a good thing. And I was like, great. 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 Love that. Now, speaking of Leah, okay. we were introduced to a look. Now, have we seen so many looks? And, and Sonia was in a look of her own this week with her barrette, a side barrette. Which um, I like. I found it. I did too. Fresh. I found it fresh. Mm-hmm. Like my easy daughter. Easy breezy cover easy girl. Easy breezy. <laughs> easy breezy. Childlike, but in a good way. Uh-huh. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Yeah. Definitely. However, Leah's fishnet black kind of mosquito net style bucket hat mm-hmm. was tough. It was. It was a look I, I didn't know well it took me a, a while to settle on what it was you know it like i was yeah. like it, it, can i see through that hat is it a hat it, i i didn't know what i was looking at so am that, i looking at sunglasses pushed up yeah am i looking at a low flying bat <laughs> <laughs> plane <laughs> am i looking at something she doesn't realizes on her head and she's going to at one point go oh something's on my head yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. it wasn't 
Sure. And then it became very clear when the housewives all were like, what's happening? I'm glad yeah. they said something. Well, the first one to say it was like Ramona was like, and I like your hat. Ramona, the fakeness with which Ramona greeted her at the Hamptons house and was like, I just want you to know that what's mine is yours. That's the kind of person I am when I host you. Which was a, sh you're like, that's not you. At like for someone to not know themselves so clearly, like that's the opposite of what you are, Ramona. And that was... I thought Ramona was very chilling in this episode with her little short shorts, making people like wait on her and clean up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm seeing that we're getting a lot this season in the first two episodes is a lot of shots of a Ramona strut of her sort of feeling yeah. herself walking down a street. I don't remember this from past seasons and we're really getting this woman feeling herself walk. Like it's a lot of like, yeah. sta you know, and like a 70s movie like staying alive or something where we see like John Travolta like strut down the street like this is what we're getting <laughs> yes Fun. when Ramona took that what did she call it a stroll around the restaurant no yeah. she took a, I, like a, a little walk around the restaurant mm -hmm. to scope to kind of scope yeah. everyone out and see if there was any men the look on her the dazed deer in headlights look on her face that is her face at rest is mm -hmm. so good she really feels herself in her she body does. I I'm jealous she when she she'll give anyone her phone number. How many men in this city of New York City do you think have Ramona Sinker's phone number? <laughs> because I think any one of us could get it in a heartbeat. Yes, if you have now, a strong. I didn't know she was a clothing buyer for Macy's. I remember hearing that at some point, and that tracks okay, for me. Okay. That tracks for me because if, I don't know if you've been into a Macy's lately. When I was. A child at Macy's is like the fanciest store you could go to. Oh, beyond. But now I swear someone could take a shit in the middle of a Macy's and no one would notice. Wow. If a tree falls. If a tree falls. <laughs> it's just. Wow. It's really? It's a mess. It is a goddamn mess in a Macy's. Like you can't find <laughs> anything. You can't. Like the only thing that's okay is like if you go down to like the cellar, you're okay. But otherwise, like if you go into a shoe department, if you go into the women's really? department, it's a like you can't find it's anything. It's like a rummage you sale. Need. It is, and it's packed to the gills. Okay. And no one can help you find. I, I just can't go <laughs> in anymore. Just in there. It's I so when I first got engaged. You know, I will tell you really quick, when the first time I made a good paycheck as an actress, I was like, this is it. Like, I'm finally going to buy the big purchase. Mm -hmm. You know, like, here it is. I've mm -hmm. actually made money. I marched myself to a Macy's and I was like, I'm going to fucking do it. Like, I psyched myself up all day. And do you know what I bought, Danielle? What'd you buy? A large cosmetics bag. <laughs> <laughs> I, a travel cosmetics bag that I still have. And I, I left like... Is it that one bad. with the flowers? Yeah. The blue one with the pink flowers? Oh, no, no. It was the oh. big black one. Okay. That one my mom gave me like 20 years ago. Aww. But I, I was just like, you know what? I'm really living. Like you, you would have thought it was a Porsche. My first big purchase where I was, I think, like I just got my first commercial. And I was yeah. like, whew, everyone can fuck off because I'm yep. moving on up. Straight to the I top. I remember going, I was like, where's the fanciest place I can go? And I hopped on over to a Club Monaco. <laughs> I Ooh. Like, Whoa. I do like a Club Monaco. I do Nothing too. ever fits me or looks right, but mm -hmm. I love to look in the window. I brought like, I think that, I think I bought like a $45 shirt and I was like, yes. L-I-V-I-N. Yes. Like this is. Yes living this is living 100 percent. um but now, so yeah there's oh, i'm sighing because we have to talk about dorinda mm -hmm. this is like it's we like have to what talk was that book we have to talk about kevin i was saying the movie where the son is like a, a murderer like a sociopath um and yeah, it's called we, we have need to talk, talk about dorinda we need to talk about dorinda now it was tough to watch the packing scene with dorinda and her housekeeper mm. Because I thought to myself, why? Dorinda, you're going away for two days. You really need help packing. And then I thought to myself, this is the same woman who <laughs> went to like a ski resort and forgot her entire suitcase. Like she's, she's unwell. <laughs> <laughs> so she does need help packing. Do you remember? We yes, went on two vacations with her. I believe it was last year where she just simply forgot her clothes. That was really upsetting. Yeah. And so um, I thought. It was also a tough scene with Luann's housekeeper, Alice. Yeah. If I had to work for Luann, 
Alice is a hero. Hero. Luann is the, at least Dorinda, I do feel like there's a, there's a rapport there. I'm not saying it's great. I'm not saying it's great. But I do feel for as like explosive and abusive as I do think Dorinda can be verbally. I could never, ever see Dorinda turning that on like. No. Her housekeeper. And I think Luann definitely turns on her house. We've seen how she treats people that work for her before. I mean, poor Alice. The way Luann was talking about, well, you can tell that fall's coming. You know, the the tree, the the flowers have turned purple. That's the sign, Alice. Oh, Alice. fucking scary. I was like, when she told Alice she was sleeping out that night, I'm sure Alice was like, thank God. What was it? Luann, I thought she was in... Upstate New York. Well, but- she of course has her, you know, new place, which we saw about a million sh- outdoor shots of from varying lengths. Yes. But this is the house that her children almost sued her over That's inside right. Harbor, you know, where famously Andy filmed his one on one. That's right. I on got the confused dock. for a second. So she does have two houses, but this one, she sort of, the chill, it's the children's house. Like the children basically. Yes. And that's what I love there. that in last week's episode, she was like, oh, my kids, they've been so great. She's like, you know, they've just seen everything. They've never once gotten upset. And I was like, didn't they sue you over that house? (laughs) They sure did. Oh, now, why are all these women who uh, have been through the ring and and have lived a life, why are they treating a tattoo as if someone just came home from prison? Like, like, they're, they're so freaked out by a tattoo. It seems strange. It's so... They really show their age in that moment because I think we forget sometimes when we see grown grown women out like dancing at the club and drinking and picking up men and and then they're like, oh, a tattoo. That's where they draw the line. Like and it I was could... like really, I mean, it is, these are our aunts. They're all of our weird aunts. Yeah. I mean, we have seen Sonia, who I love, basically a butt sex on camera and be like, yeah. But a tattoo. Just this week, she said, oh, I know him. She, just this week, she goes, oh, I know him. I had sex on his sink in San tropez <laughs> Not a problem. And yet a tattoo. Oh, she's disgusting. like, don't defecate on your body. And then she's like, I mean defame. <laughs> she's like, it's okay to defecate on your body. That That's I'm fine. fine with. That's A-OK by me. Um, Dorinda is in darkness. And I do believe it's hard to say this, and I know I've gotten comments for this, but I, I don't know if there's anything else we can say, but that she seems to be either incredibly depressed and leaning on alcohol or in the clutches of alcoholism, and it's causing her things she, to spiral. There's so much darkness in Dorinda, and I don't know what it, I, I mean, I do know what it's about in the sense that, you know, her husband died and it was terrible, but... There, I don't know where the light is. The dark has taken over. You know how, I don't know if when you were a kid, you saw the never ending story, but remember they keep saying like the darkness is coming. The dark, like that's, the darkness is enveloping and there's not much light. With Did you see how she backpedaled? It was very, I think kind of subtle, but how she backpedaled when she realized that Leah was not like Tinsley and Leah was not going to take her shit. And then mm-hmm. she was finally like, yeah, it was a misunderstanding. Yes. We've never <laughs> she was like, it. all right, I'm going to give Leah a chance. Cause she thought that Leah was going to be as weak as Tinsley is. Mm-mm. Now we also saw, as we were saying, Ramona making Tinsley and Leah clean up the trash of the other women. Mm-hmm. And Ramona said, I'm not helping. <laughs> I was like, I mean, what would I do at that moment? If, I mean, I guess I, I, they were scared of Ramona. And so I understand the fear. They have no choice they but have, to clean. But to see Leah, Tinsley, it's like, of course, Tinsley will do anything anyone tells her. But to see Leah and her bucket hat. Having, scramble. <laughs> to scramble plates and dishes for that, that Luann and Sonia and and the Countess had left behind. That yep. was a, it was tough. Now, the basement room that she put mm. to rent, uh, Luann, and that was a wonderful reveal. That was great. She was like, because she had set it up beautifully. It's like, you have a private section of the house, your own entrance, your own exit. You can You're have not sex gonna, down there. You can do whatever you want. You have your own, you have your own bathroom. It's a suite. You won't hear Tinsley and Sonia drinking later. And night. so she no. really built her up. She really built her up. And then 
to go into that empty, cold base, not temperature controlled base. No, I could feel how cold it is. I could feel how to even though that you know it was wall to wall carpeting, but freezing, 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 empty, not a picture on the wall, a cold TV that did not work. (laughs) That and Luann was like, "You gotta be kidding me with this shit." And usually I'm like, Luann, get your, over yourself. But I felt the coldness of that basement so real that I was like, Yeah, this what did is you a... say about it? Who do I you said, put oh, down there? I said, you, you, in a, you put in a basement, you put a prisoner or a crazy aunt. That is, and, yeah. and if you think about it, that is kind of what Luann is, but like, that's yeah, not that's, for the That's, that's the not... cross section where Luann comes. Yes, closer. but it's not where you put a friend. And it no. was. Ramona was fucking with her and I just loved it so much. Oh, gaslighting her too. Just being like, it's the best room in that And house. to put Leah in a beautiful room. <gasps> beautiful, beautiful. Everyone else had these warm upstairs rooms where light comes in. I mean, not a hint, not a lick of light was in that dark place. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to talk. So, so Sonia brought Marley, the dog. Hmm. And no, she... Sonia brought Coco? No. No, Sonia brought Ramona brought Coco. But Sonia brought her dog too, didn't she? Yes. And she said, Marley is not washed. And I I knew what that dog smelled like. <laughs> <laughs> These dogs, I know I'm going to hear, but it's like all the only names I can remember are Strawberry and Shortcake. Oh, well, I actually really like them. They're so cute. Okay. When Tinsley was like, you know, they're Chinese dogs. They only understand Chinese and pulled out that translator. That it was, was like watching 90 Day Fiance when the couples just simply cannot communicate. And then when, when the, when the, you know, the voice app spoke in Chinese to see little shortcake perk up, I was like, I, this is heartwarming. <laughs> well, at first I was like, they don't understand anything. You're dogs. Like they don't understand English or Chinese. They don't understand yeah, anything. Yeah. They, they All they know is they're with a very dim woman. Yes. Dim. Who's giving dim. them probably like the strangest late night coca van or something food or coca <laughs> So that was really weird. And she was like, I know you guys were vegan in the shelter, but you eat meat here. I know. So tins. You know, that's how she said. And I talked to kids like I talked to dogs. So, you know, that's what she's saying to those kids of Bruce, whoever he is. When are we going to meet Bruce? I don't know that we are because now she's engaged to Scott. Um, Another tough moment was Dorinda crying on the phone to her contractor. Hmm. I was like, in these times, it's a little in hard times. to. I, I, and look. I would hate for my house to flood. I've I've had flooding in a house. It's a nightmare. But for this, <laughs> no one wealthy, wants their house to flood for no. sure. But to have but. this wealthy woman crying to a contractor. and then being like, "There's just so much I have to deal with day in day out with this house." He's calling me. Basically, it's like there's so much this contractor's dealing with, and the workers they're calling me day in and day out to simply say yes or no. <sighs> And look, I've done this type of work with contractors. I, I just don't accept that it it is the reason your life is unraveling. Yeah. She's got there's so much more she can blame it on that, but And Dorinda ooh. doesn't work. Is that just double checking that? I don't believe she ever yeah. has. Sure, sure, sure. Now look, I like Dorinda. She's just making it very hard to keep liking her. She is it's two episodes in. It's been tough. Yeah. And, and I, I think again, we're only going lower if if yeah. what Sonia said holds true. But, you know, I hope for the best. You know, it was low when no one seemed to understand or pronounce the word touche. Mm. When Ramona was like, touche. I don't think it means what what you think it means. But But then no one knew. No one knew. No one knew. That was fun and tough at the same time. I mean, that's New York. I think we've got, you know, it's a delight. You have anything else? There was a preview coming up. Uh, Sonia had a great line, and this is all I heard in the preview. She just said, and I quote, I'm not arm candy. I don't shave my pussy. And I didn't understand what the two had to do with each other, but I loved it nonetheless. I can connect the two. <laughs> I'd love to see you try. I just can. It's like, look, <laughs> if I was like... <laughs> I'm going to go on a limb and say, like, if this is all I was to just be, like, on someone's arm, like, I'd at least shave it up. <laughs> like, well, as a person who, obviously, I'm not arm candy because I don't shave my pussy. Danielle, I didn't it, make the... People might be at capacity with this type I, of... I, look, I didn't bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> I guess well... I did. <laughs> So yeah, I brought it, it up. I didn't. It's hard it to know where the connection is. Yes. But 
I just, I just had to point it out. I'm excited to see what it is. I just don't so know. So excited. I don't know. So excited. Uh, should we move on to Atlanta? Yes, please. Okay. Oh, boy. I have to say, this week on Atlanta, um, Greg Leaks looking yep. slim and trim and handsome playing pool. Very good. And I thought when <laughs> Nini came down the stairs, I was like, <gasps> woo! She was like, legs! I, I was like, wow, they it. really have something. And like, they've been under the covers. Like, things are happening hey, between them. Yeah, there's been a... a like a something's going there's sex going on in that house, yeah like a sexual feels. renaissance yeah i feel yeah. like i do feel like with nini and greg i feel like a dorinda questioning tinsley it's like what is going on in that relationship though don't feel like she's telling us i believe she loves greg i do believe she yes loves greg. but i think something's gone on they've split like now i think they seem in a good place but i don't really feel like i have a handle on exactly what's going on Either do I. They've obviously had ups and downs, got divorced, remarried, cancer. Sure. sure. He was hard. She was selfish. It was... I think he cheated, right? During cancer or before? No, 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 before. Yes, I believe he did. I believe that is what happened. Can we talk... I mean, this is kind of dark, but the news came out about Sheree's mom going missing. Oh, my God. What the fuck? What the fuck? Missing for two weeks. That's so upsetting. Um, I mean, again, I don't want to bring us down, but that was like a shock. I was like, oh, That was God. a shock. I shock. know. First, I was, I, I just had scanned it, and I was like, oh, fuck, is this a, to do with corona? And honestly, just as devastating and terrible. Yeah. But anyway, I hope they, I hope, you know. I know. They find her. I hope Me too. Everything's okay. Um, now, one of my favorite scenes on Atlanta this week was Portia just driving by Nini's store tags and them just catching her. Like she wasn't like on the call sheet that day. <laughs> she just <laughs> I feel like that happens by. a lot on Atlanta. I love it. Yeah. It was such a a, a a nice, a fresh surprise. That's the most life I've seen in Cynthia in a long time. Mm -hmm. And that's why Cynthia needs this injection of Nini and fun. It's like, you know, Eva and Cynthia together are just, Cynthia, they're just boring as hell. Yeah. But to see Nini, Nini does liven up anyone. And so that's why we need a Nini and a Portia together. It's like, that's our Sonia and our Ramona. These are our freaking fracks. But even Cynthia, the way she and Nini mm -hmm. were going back and forth in that store. How often is Nini in that store, Danielle? Mm -hmm. Only when filming. I feel like <laughs> only when filming. We are not seeing Nini at tags. No way. I would like to go there when we go to Atlanta, God willing. Yes. This summer. If, if we get there this summer, if everything, I, I believe it will. Um, but I would love to go to tags. I love that Nini and, and um, I love that Nini and Cynthia were wearing the same like sort of tiger print outfit. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. Very fun. <laughs> very fun. Honestly. Okay. I, uh, I felt I was candy in the scene and I do not, I, I, I'm not at all saying like I have the career candy has nothing like that. None of us But do. that conversation <gasps> I have had when, <sighs> when her husband was kind of reaming her out for choosing work over family. <laughs> Actually, David's never really reamed me out for that, but just that feeling of guilt that you put on yourself to see Todd sit down with her and say like, you're back for two days and you're going to all these fundraising events and you're you're supporting your friends, but we need you here with your family. It was just uh, so hard to watch. I just identified with Candy. I too identified with her when... I wish I had she, done the sex scenes that Candy had done. Oh, me too. But... I do feel... And she... That was tough. But... And when... Ace was crying on the phone. Oh, I had to fast forward. I to that scene. started crying. I started crying. I couldn't that was watch it. So hard to watch because that guilt is a mom. She's just she's doing the best she can. She is like nobody's working harder than Candy. No, and I, right. And I have to say to Todd, like, how do you think you have your fucking trucking business? How do you yes. think OLG came together and part two? I'm not so sure what kind of money Todd's bringing in. I'm just not so sure. And I just know that Candy is doing amazing yep. work as a mother, as a businesswoman, as a star. And I and I heard what she was saying when she was like, I have to do to work now because I'm going to be home forever, basically chained to a newborn as you are. And what we all know is that I'm sure Todd won't be chained to that baby yeah. as men can go. And sorry to hear anger in my boys. <laughs> and I'm not saying every man, <laughs> but I but, feel like I've been there where, you know, you're pre-baby and you're just kind of like doing everything you can because you know you're going to be in that baby yes. hole of hell. Yes. And it's just like, it was and, tough. 
It was. It that was really hard, I, and I identified too with just like the guilt and the sort of you know what someone telling you what you you're trying to keep all the balls in the air, and then someone telling you you're doing wrong when you were doing your goddamn fucking best. It is so tough. So tough. I don't have a ton more for Atlanta. I feel like it was a transitional episode. You know, we're back from Greece. We're seeing like Kenya go and get her will sorted. Sorted. <laughs> I sound like Moira Rose. Sorted. The fact uh, that we did find this out, the fact that Kenya wasn't allowed to talk to Mark Daly's mom and dad. Mark Daly up. is a scary, scary individual. I would not be surprised if Mark Daly has families all over this country. Not at all. That he's kept separate. Yeah, he is. There's something that just was going on there that we have yeah. not been privy to. But that to me was a very dark sort of like revelation of like she wasn't a le- to, like that's a red flag. I think there were tons of red flags, but she just had her eye on the prize and she got the prize. She got this gorgeous little baby. Beautiful. But I'm so glad she's out of that relationship. I am so Ugh, heebie-jeebies. Glad. He's because a bad dude. Bad dude. Bad dude. And I feel bad because I thought he was a good dude and I thought Cynthia's fiance. Uh, yeah. we. I mean, I don't want to be rude, Danielle, but that was <laughs> shocking that you had those two mixed up. I really did. I had it wrong. I had it, it so wrong. It caused me to like, and I never question you, to question just like your basic human intuition. Uh, Casey, I don't know if I'm coming or going anymore. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that you could admit it, though, Danielle, is, is a that feels, That's step. growth and it's strength and it, it means that, like, I'm not yep. lost. That's but right. It's... That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's oh. We, oh, and that stuff about Marla was really beautiful when she was talking about, like, how she oh, didn't know my what her God. purpose in life was. And then she finally found it with these boys that she's helping raise. And I was just like, give her a peach. Give her a peach. And I, I do feel like we saw the softer side of Sears with Marlo. And to see her crying was wonderful. And beautiful. I, I, so I'm beautiful. loving this side of Marla 100%. And I loved actually, a lot of times, you know, with the charity stuff, I'm a little like, oh, please, let's fast forward. But I really did like this. Like, it was a beautiful setup. First yes. of all, the table looked beautiful, this March of Dimes, and then this notion to have kind of this, this special day supporting healthcare and kind of raising the bar for medical standards, you know, for black women, I thought was unbelievable. Yeah. I really And I too. love that Portia was doing that, of course. However, then we had the crazy moment when Kenya, during Shamia, Shamia <laughs> when Shamia got up and was like, yeah, you know, my water broke. I, I didn't know who to turn to or call. And, and then Kenya just goes, uh, she called me. Uh, she yeah. called me. I think she <laughs> called me first. And Portia was like, so thrown because they're so best thrown. friends. Why is Shamia calling Kenya first? Kenya is a very devious. I'm starting she... to turn. Wow, Casey, you've been so, so sort of like tried and true with Kenya. What I just happened? wonder if like, God, I don't know. I, I, there've been red flags. I feel like Kenya and Mark, you know, yeah. it's like I've seen all the red flags and I've been defending, mm-hmm. you know, and it's almost like the more people come at you, the more you have to double down. Yeah. And I'm finding it harder and harder. But I, and and the thing about Kenya is people. The only person really coming for Kenya was Nini. So I get why she's coming for Nini. But when she goes after Cynthia and when she goes after Portia in that way, in the sense of like she knew what she was doing, it is tough to see her hurt those people who are not really hurting her. Yeah. So, yeah. as you always say, Danielle, I do. Go ahead. Hurt people, hurt, hurt people, people, hurt people. <laughs> I think Oprah said it. But I, I think I say it best. <laughs> I think Oprah said it first and you say it best. Yes, thank you. Uh, should we take a little break and come back for a Vanderpump? Yes, please. Rules. <laughs> ah, Vanderpump rules. Vanderpump doesn't rule no it fucking sucks this year i'm it sorry really and i read an article about it and i think that's what started to turn me off what's what, what did you read it's just this article i think her name was kate arthur <gasps> oh she she's amazing it. kate arthur she she's a, a an amazing journalist she ran buzzfeed and a variety yep. and and um her partner does my hair sometimes Okay, well, this is all very exciting. I have to read this article. Mm-hmm. It turned me, you know, I'm very 
you know, I anyone tells me anything, yeah. I'm immediately like, that's my viewpoint. Yes. I ditch every single thing I've thought. But she crystallized what I thought, which is that it's fucking dusty and it needs to like we need new blood. But what the are new we blood watching? They bring in isn't great. Like I'm not loving this Dania. And the, I don't know the, who's the dumb one. Who is Danica? Like, oh, Car. God, I don't know her name, her name honestly. I'm like, is it Carly? Is it something? The one who like has never had pasta or whatever. Her, she's yeah. her theory about pasta is like, yes, carbs are fattening. Congratulations. The one who said, "I bought my boobs and I named them Tia and Tamara, sister, sister." Ugh, she is unwatchable. It did make me laugh, though. I'm sorry. When Well, I will say when they were doing a cake fight and someone was going to smear cake in her face and she goes, my skincare routine can't afford this. <laughs> Hot, uh, yes. But but horrible. And then that Danica is horrible. Oh. She's like the mean friend who hates, you know, she hates someone and then pretends to be nice. You know, kind of saying like, I don't think that guy's good enough for yes, you. Like, she's like, just a fucking weirdo. And why is everyone telling Dana that? This guy's not good enough for her. That guy's. Guess what? Dana's not that good. These guys are plenty good for her. Wow. It just is the truth. Like, no, I know. Especially you know? a girl who's going to say this and then the guy's going to respond with the most guffaws I've ever heard in my life when she said, huh, I got more baggage than to me. <laughs> Give me something I can watch. I'm just, I'm starting to go to with Paul's viewpoint here about Summer House. I don't know. I just don't feel like Wait. they have it. And I want to say something right now. Where are the people of color on Bravo? It's fucking shocking. How, how and do we, we not have it, but one like, There's person- something about watching all these fucking white, boring people on Vanderpump and on Summer House. And they keep giving us more. I'm like, like what's yeah. happening? It's, 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 it is, it's a bit odd. Um, bit odd. I'm trying to and think of anything else. <sighs> with Vanderpump, let me see if I have any thoughts uh, on uh, it. Well, you know, Ugh, if I have to see one more person on any reality show go to an axe throwing place, I'm done. I, I can't done. be bothered. But no, this thank is like you. the this is like those other the which call it rooms the um when everyone gets caught in a room panic work, rooms uh, and then there was the room where everyone like broke things. Oh, but that one the girl who named her tits uh, Tia and Tamara. Yeah. Her yep. quote of the night really made me laugh. Was I'm a picky person about my cheesecake, so I only go to the cheesecake factory for cheesecake. <laughs> Which she told diners at Sir that were like, "Do you like the cheesecake?" <laughs> no, she's like, she's "I only like, like personally a professional. It has to be in the name, or I don't want it." Personally, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm Lisa. I was thinking I was so wrapped up in that moment. I was like, "Oh, Lisa's not going to like this." Then I'm like, "What? Uh, this is a show." Uh, I will say for all the things that Katie and Schwartz. I felt, I thought this was going to be the hardest thing we will ever get through. When Schwartz said, this is why I don't want to fuck you in front of everyone. I got to say, Katie, let this one slide off like water off a duck's back. They literally, he, he said, and she agreed, we've been, we've sailed these waters before. <laughs> and she's like, that's right. You have she's to like, say, I'm hard to fuck and hard to be around. And I'm like, you shouldn't have. Like, that's not waters to sail twice. You don't go in a tsunami twice. Like yeah, she was like, Bubba, just say you're sorry. It, to to not m- have your luggage and move out after that conversation. I don't know where we go to. <laughs> then plan a second wedding in Vegas. A vow renewal. <sighs> and then I, it was also a tough line when Schwartz said, don't be a social justice warrior. Oh, <sighs> Jesus Schwartz. I you know, mean, I blamed I, her for their relationship for so long, but he is... He is a, a piece of shit. Yeah, he definitely is. The other thing I will say is I never want to see Kristen Dowdy driving anywhere to go meet people for drinks because I'm like, is she leaving that car there? Because what I then proceed to see is her drink like one trillion drinks. Okay, I'm going back to that article, what Kate mm-hmm. Arthur said. Okay. And I knew it. I knew it in my bones. And I think we've even said it, but to hear the way she said it, and I, I don't have the quote in front of me, but... Bo is on the show because he wanted to be a famous actor. It's like he may or may not love Saucy, but Bo wants to be there for the fame. And I think he does a great job hiding that fact, trying to hide it. Yeah. Wow. That's really making me... I mean, he keeps saying, like, the the problem with Bo is he thinks he's funny. And he's not. He's a goofball. But he keeps... I guess he thinks that he's the comedic 
uh, flavor on the show. And that's not what we're getting from him. No. Do you not think he loves Stasi? I do. It really like made me cringe when he was like, I love you so fucking much. Stasi. Yeah. I was like, Bleh. I I do think he loves her, but I think he loves being on the show. A yeah, lot. A does. lot, a lot, a lot. And they I all agree. do, but he does seem to have an extra little glint in his eye when he comes up with his costumes and his little things. Uh-huh. And I'm sure he's a nice guy. Oh, I bet he is too. Does he work in casting? Is that what we saw? It was unclear. Show? It was unclear. Just to tell him I'm tech avail for any project that now look, <laughs> if he's listening, hey, I've got a mic. <laughs> I'm ready. I've got audition pieces currently here doing for you. uh <laughs> currently doing voiceover work. I'm here. Um now, you know who we're seeing a lot more of on the show this season is I think Lisa Vanderpump. Yes. At like yes. she showed up at Dana's birthday party like at, that felt beneath her for me. And I, I I love how she said I normally don't go to my staff's birthday parties, but I was like, but you have to. Well, I thought because she's not on Real Housewives of Beverly yes. Hills anymore. Yeah, it's like, I don't think Lisa would have gone to Vegas. No. Mm-mm. But she doesn't, she needs, she wants screen time now that she's not on Beverly Hills. Yeah, she's much more involved. Mm-hmm. And I thought mm. that that was interesting. I do think, and Kate Arthur, and I go back to this article, she was like, it's very tough to watch because we all know so concretely that they don't need to work there. The one person I'll disagree with about that is I think that Jax may genuinely make Britney work there. To bring in money. So? Yes, he's such a cheap pig. Yes. I do believe Sheena Shea works there. I and I know Ma- and we know Max works we, there. We got a Max sighting this week when Lisa, his mother, was like, Max, can you go get Danica for me? Yeah. That was tough. Finally, I was half I, I I screamed. I squealed when we saw him, but then he was ordered to get a star of the show. Well, not even a star of recurring at best. Recurring at best. Mm. I mean, let's see what next week brings, but I just feel like we've had a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. It hasn't been. It hasn't been. Where It hasn't it, been. It hasn't been. And let's see. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Well, Case, uh, anything, no, you, anything else you want to report from, <sighs> from, from your quarantine quarters? No, uh, I, I, can we talk I about your like pajamas? Us... Can you talk about your oh, pajamas? Oh, yes. I would love I am to. wearing, uh, I, I think it's, they're called Olivia Hal? And tell everybody H- how you H-A-L-L-E. <laughs> and tell everybody how you're treating your pajamas, how these aren't your sleep pajamas. Okay. So I got this new nice pair of pajamas to try to lift my spirits during the quarantine. They're kind of olive brown with purple and white lions on them and stars all over they're them. They're beautiful. Thank you. They're silk. My son loves to cuddle with them, which is Wonderful. And I don't wear them at night, though, of course. I wear them. They're my pajamas I wear from about 4 to 8 p.m. Because they're too nice to sleep in. But during the day, I'm going to definitely put on like a yoga pant in the morning. Yeah. And then I transition into these silk babies around 4, kind of my... You know, time. it feels very down to Nabby, how they always <laughs> dress for dinner. You know what I mean? They're always like, this, this is our morning wear. You know, and then, you know, around 4 o'clock, yeah. everyone sort of dresses for dinner. And here and then, I am. <laughs> I, and I'm feeling so free and comfortable to I do this it. on Zoom with people. You know what? I, I posted this on Instagram. I just want to send out a little public service announcement about mm-hmm. Zoom. Okay. Please don't hold your cat and stroke <laughs> your cat over and over close up to the camera and make me look at your cat's butthole. Now, when did this happen? <laughs> it's happened so many times that people are in it. You know, like now we're seeing people's animals, not a cat yeah. person, but... Mm-hmm. Cats are coming, you know, and they're just, I've seen so many women just like in meetings or various things I've been a part of on Zoom, stroking their cats and the cat's butthole is like a (laughs) close up. (laughs) Fucking makes me sick. You know, I'd like to say that about people's buttholes too right now. Like don't, people just standing up and I'm kidding, (laughs) showing their buttholes. (laughs) Please don't. Okay. This is not the segue that I wanted, but to end the show, if it's Mm -hmm. okay with you, Danielle. I'd like to just do a very quick tribute to my basically all-time favorite songwriter and singer, John Prine, who passed this week due to uh, coronavirus. And he and Iris DeMent, who I love, they uh, sang a duet that my husband and I danced to at our wedding called In Spite of Ourselves. And I'd like to close the show with it. And um, love you, John Prine. Stay safe, everybody. Stay safe.
She don't like her eggs all runny. She thinks crossing her legs is funny. She looks down her nose at money. She gets it on like the Easter bunny. She's my baby. I'm her honey. I'm never gonna let her go. He ain't got laid in a month of Sundays. I caught him once and he was sniffing my undies. He ain't too sharp, but he gets things done. Drinks his beer like it's oxygen. He's my baby and I'm his honey. Never gonna let him go. In spite of ourselves, we'll end up sitting on a rainbow. Against all odds, honey, we're the big door prize. We're gonna spike our noses right off of our faces. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. She thinks all my jokes are corny, convict movies and make her horny. She likes ketchup on her scrambled eggs. Swears like a sailor when she shaves her legs. She takes a licking and keeps on ticking. I'm never gonna let her go. He's got more balls than a big brass monkey. He's a whacked out weirdo and a love bug junkie. Sly as a fox, crazy as a loon. Payday comes and he's a howling at the moon. But he's my baby. I don't mean maybe. I'm never gonna let him go. In spite of ourselves, we'll end up a sitting on a rainbow. Against all odds, honey, we're the big door prize. We're gonna spike our noses right off of our faces. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. In spite of ourselves, we'll end up a sitting on a rainbow. Against all odds, honey, we're the big door prize. Oh, we're gonna spike our noses right off of our faces. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. In spite of ourselves. 